Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today I would like to share with you something that took me a while to discover. When working on a building system I realized I need to move a tile half unit down. And this is pretty easy to do in the editor, but when you want to create your level at the runtime this gets a little bit more complicated. So here I have this very simple scene, some grass, some trees and empty tile palette. Let's drop into it wooden pole sprite. Looks alright, but what if you would like the bottom of the pole to be in the middle of the tile? It turns out there is a very easy way to adjust it. From the list of the tools on the top of the tile palette we select the first one. This allows us to select the tile we want to adjust, so I'm clicking on my pole tile. And now in the inspector I can see the tile's grid selection properties. Ok, so here I can adjust the tile offset, its rotation and scale and some other stuff. And by the way, if you know how to unlock the color lock and transform lock, please let me know in a comment. Now we can change the tool to a regular brush and start painting on our level. But what will happen if we try to write a script that will allow us to do that at the runtime? Well, let's figure it out. I create a new script and call it Tile Placer. Inside of it I create two serialized fields, one of type tilemap and one of type tilebase. Then, to do not complicate this tutorial too much, I break all the good practices and check if the left mouse button was pressed to this frame using the mouse class. If the mouse button was pressed, I use the camera.main.screen toward point to convert the mouse position, which is the screen position, to the world coordinates. Then in the second line I use the tilemap field that we created at the very beginning to convert those word coordinates to ones that can be easily understood by our tilemap. And then finally I place our tile on the tilemap using the setTile method. I assign the script to a grid object in my scene. Then I fill both of the references. For the tilemap I drag and drop the only tilemap in the scene. And for the tile of course I drag and drop our wooden pole. I'm not sure if you noticed but the offset that I set on the tile is not visible on the tile itself but rather on the palette. So if we test it now, as expected we'll see that the tile is placed at the default position rather at the one specified in the palette. It turns out that the set tile method is overloaded. It's another variant allows us to specify something called tile change data. We can create one in our script and then set some of its properties. The first one is position, which will require us to provide the cell position which we already have. Then a tile we want to place. And now something a little bit crazy, color. So it's a property that allows us to change a tint of the tile. If we don't want to change it, we can simply provide color.white. Did I say that the color was crazy? Well, now something a little bit more crazy. The transform. It wouldn't be that strange if not its underlying type, which is matrix 4x4. Yeah, this doesn't sound too intuitive. And it isn't. I have no idea how the math behind that works, but I managed to experimentally find a way of putting there the transform and the rotation. So basically it turns out that the matrix 4x4 has some useful methods. One of them is translate. This method requires us to provide vector free. From what I understand, the result is not the offset itself, but the description of the operation. So we created something like a description of how the object should be offset. And if it weren't complicated enough, it turns out we can multiply it by another matrix. For example one created by using the rotate method. I'm going to do exactly that. The rotate method requires us to provide a quaternion. And because quaternions are another crazy thing, I'm cheating using quaternion.euler. This allows me to specify the X, Y and Z rotation that we know well from the inspector. Now I assign the created matrix to our transform. And then I use our tile change data inside the set tile method. It turns out it requires us to provide another parameter. Few minutes ago I asked you about the transform lock and color lock. 
The other parameter is basically a setting which allows us to ignore those flags. Once again, if you know how to change those locks in the inspector, please let me know in the comment. I feel that sooner or later I may actually need that. And finally, we are ready to test our tile placer. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if so, don't forget to comment this video and like it. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.